Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can overcome a problem that you might think is color cast but actually is something else. Now if you start seeing as you're doing flash photography for interior real estate, you start seeing that everything looks like it's getting color cast. The colors just aren't quite right. You might be tempted to start using your ambient layer in normal mode as you're blending that flash ambient blend. That would actually be a big mistake and I'm going to show you why. Some of the downfalls with using Lightroom is that since it's an Adobe product and not OEM, you do have some problems with what's known as debayering. Now that could be one of the problems that you're up against. Of course, color cast can be, and there's a video earlier here on my channel that shows how you can correct color cast. Here though, I'm going to show you how you can actually detect it, see if there's an inherent problem using Lightroom for your camera, which guaranteed every single camera using Lightroom will to some degree, and I'll get into that in more detail as to why, but also how you can detect it, how you can correct it, how you can automate it into your workflow so that in a snap it will take care of those issues for you and then you can continue on processing and get very accurate color representation. Ready to see how this is done? Let's get started. So this is the picture that we're going to be taking a look at. This is the image. It was shot just this last week. And this is a great example where things were actually fairly good when I was done processing this picture. And I was pretty happy with everything, the way that it turned out. But if you notice up here on my sliders, I went with a I decreased the temperature by negative three. This is after it came back out of post, out of uh, doing it in Photoshop, the flash ambient blending. And I also dropped the tint by negative two. Now those are values that I know are somewhat inherent for a lot of the problems that happen with Adobe trying to use my particular camera, the Nikon D610s that I use on site. So let me first show you the problem, why this is off a little bit and what you may be seeing. So I'm using some Nikon software here. And this is used to just view uh, something uh, out of what's called View NX. So you might be familiar with this Nikon. By the way, Canon has their own version of something like this. Uh, Sony has something. Every OEM has their own software which can decode their RAW files. So if I take, for instance, this is a very simple flash shot. Now you can see on the histograms over here on the right, it's just a mid luminosity. I like to be a little bit brighter than that. I'm going to show you an example where I did some composites to get that point. But this is a great example to be able to show the difference in the debayering problem. So this is how it looked in camera. This is how it looks then in Nikon software. But as soon as I bring it into a Lightroom, this is what happens. Boom. A lot of stuff changes. I'll go back and forth here and you can see Nikon, Lightroom, Nikon, Lightroom. You can see the histograms are changing. And I want you to notice something in particular, how the red and the green histograms are especially changing. So those are changing, you can see, and those are the common cast colors that you'll see. So with Nikon, it was very limited on the reds, and it did have a mid-spectrum, but as soon as we go to what Lightroom thought, it got broader on that and also played some funky stuff with the green. So I know that's the case. And you might think, oh, that's just from flash. It's not. These are directly out of camera and then directly brought into Lightroom. So this is known as a debayering issue. Now, all raw files have proprietary information that's held by each OEM like Nikon, uh, Canon, uh, Sony, Fuji, everybody has their own uh, proprietary information. So when it comes to third parties like Adobe trying to interpret what those raw files will be, they do their best guess, but they don't always get it accurately. Uh, you might think that it might be all we can correct with an ambient shot. Let's take a look at that. This is ambient out of camera, and this is ambient as it's interpreted by Lightroom. They are definitely different. Colors are different. Luminosity is different. So this is an inherent problem that you will have if you're using Adobe products, but we would use them for our workflow and for good reason. So there's an easy way to correct this one. After I'm done processing, I can go into Lightroom when I'm all done with my flash ambient blending. I apply my presets, correct all that stuff that I talk about through all my, uh, my books on the interior photography and also advanced editing. Once that's done, I usually drop the, uh, sometimes when I see a problem like that, I drop the white balance by negative three and the tint by negative two. But how do I know that and how do I make that accurate? Well, what I've done is to show you something in a quick way you can also do this in uh, Photoshop if you want to. So now let's get into something a little bit more advanced. 
Here is where I've brought both of those pictures into Lightroom. One that was out of straight out of Nikon and one that was brought out from Lightroom for the uh, for its export. So I've got uh, at the bottom here, this is Nikon. And by the way, I had to turn that into a TIFF to preserve it, bring it into Photoshop, because if I brought the raw file in, it would use the same engine that Lightroom uses to debayer the raw file, which is ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. So I've got then above that, then on another layer, this is what I call flash Lightroom. So it's the same picture. You can see this is where the problems are coming in. So easy way to do that for my automation portion of it, I've made an action which just goes shift F2 and it added a curves layer with a slight adjustment in it. You can see without it how that changes. Let's zoom in a little bit more to a problem area and you'll see what I mean. So over here, notice how right now it looks as a fairly good color, but as soon as I get rid of the curves layer, I get a reddish hue. Now it's not a big difference, but now notice also, for instance, if we go down here to where these uh, pillar, the uh, crown molding is, excuse me, around here. If I turn off the curves layer, it, it gets more of a red hue as though it's got some type of color cast going on. You can see that a lot on the doors. With that correction though, that goes away and it turns more white. So how did I create that action? Well, I'm not going to show you exactly how to create an action, but I'll show you the steps that were involved to make this happen. Basically, this is talked about in my color, in my advanced book on doing color validation, color correction. So to do that, what you first do is you make a new layer. So you go layer, new layer, and I'll just call this gray. Then you want to go to edit, and then you want to fill that layer, and you want to fill it with 50% gray. You turn its blending mode into difference, and it's going to look awful. It's going to look like this. Don't worry, we're going to correct that. Now you want to add a layer, adjustment layer, and you want to add a threshold layer. Now, move the slider all the way to the left. Start moving that slider to the right until you, until you start seeing some black dots. Those are going to be your gray points. Let's zoom into some of those pixels. Okay, so that's going to be gray. You want to make sure that it is. Just make, you can go and uh, turn on your uh, layer just to see like that. You can, what I'm doing here is I'm just doing Alt and clicking the eye icon on my uh, layer down here that's called Flash Lightroom. You see that? So I'm pretty confident that's a neutral gray area. Now above the layer, in this case it's called Flash Lightroom, not above your gray, not above your threshold. You want to go below those right to your problem layer. So this would be like your finished layer. And now what you want to do is you add a curves layer. So layer, adjustment layer, and then this would be a curves layer. Now. You take the middle eyedropper, which is your gray point, go into one of those black pixels and click it. And you can see things changed on the curves, they changed over here. Now we don't need the gray layer in the threshold. We'll turn them off, but you can basically throw them away. Now this is with the curves layer, this is without it. To see the difference with that in totality, we'll add a clipping mask to the curves layer so that it hangs on to this flash layer from Lightroom, what Lightroom was doing with debayering. And when we go back and forth, the luminosity didn't change, you know, because that's another problem that we have with Lightroom debayering, but at least the colors were fairly well corrected across the board. They were at least improved to be able to do that. Once you have that and you like that curves layer, all that you need to do then is go up to this little icon here in the properties box and then you can save it as a curves preset. So later on, what you can do, and I've already done that, I've saved it as a file. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of all these layers as though I just brought this up. I could just go layer, new adjustment layer, curves layer, and then I could then load a preset. In this case, I had saved that one as LRD Bayer Correct Interior, and it loads that up. Then all I have to do and all that I did for this is then make an action to take that one step further just to create that curves layer and load that preset. So that once again, all I have to do is after I'm done with all my processing, I hit Shift F2 and then that's all done. So let's run through the whole thing real quick. Let me go ahead and close this all out. We're not gonna save any of that. I'm gonna go through this whole example 
This was my ambient shot. This was uh, then uh, one of the composites that I'm going to use. This is me flashing up real high so I get enough light into the far end. Then I've got another one over here that does the same thing but for the other side of the room. And then I've also got selected here a window pull that I'm going to use in darken mode. I've already done the presets that I talk about in the, uh, the interiors book. So I'm just going to go and open those as layers in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. Now you can auto align, do all that stuff, but here we're just going to run through this really quick. So I'm going to do a fast composite, add a window pull, and then add my action, take this in the post and finish it all up. So I've got an action that will turn my top layer into the uh, luminosity mode. So I've done that. I hit my thing for that. I'm going to go ahead and take this particular layer of the composite, layer mask hide, take a brush at 100% and then paint myself in or out I should say in this case. Change the brush down to about 30% flow. I was at, uh, at 100% and then I'm going to go ahead and just maybe fill some of that in. So now I've got my composite. I'm happy with that. Now I've got a fairly evenly lit room and now I take the ambient shot and the ambient shot is in luminosity because I know the colors are more correct in my flash shot than what they were when I shot just an ambient shot with all this various light coming in. So once again, it's in luminosity mode and I take a big brush. I'm going to use 30% and I'll go ahead and I'll add in then some luminosity. So I paint in some of that. I'm not going to do the whole kit and caboodle, but you've seen me do this many times. I outline it in the book, do a whole bunch of stuff like that. Now let's look quickly at the window pull. So I'll drag that up to the top, change that into darken mode, layer mask hide. To do this really quick, I'll use a polygon tool and I'm just going to draw a polygon across this whole wall of windows. And just to do this very quickly, Press X to reverse my colors, delete, that does that, reverse my colors back, control D. Maybe I'll take a brush 100% just to real quickly get this window over here. Good. Okay, so we're basically done. Let's say that we're happy with that. That all looks fine. Now what I want to do is apply my action to correct those colors from that debayering problem. So I hit my action. In this case, I've made it shift F2. It made that curves layer on top. Without it, this is what it looked like. With it, this is what it looked like. You can see the reds have been corrected. The, um, if I turn it off and on, you can see the difference. And there's a big difference there in the color. So that makes me happy. Okay, and you might see that as just a minor difference, but especially if you ever want to work with architects, designers, uh, interior designers, and builders, they picked out paint color. They know what it is. They want a true representation. So anyways, this will help correct that. Like before, layer, flatten image, save that. It goes back over into Lightroom. Let's apply a bump to it and see what happens. So we'll go ahead and apply that bump and then maybe some other stuff. And we've got pretty much a finished product at that point. Now I realized there was a lot involved with that and you might be looking at that going, I can't do that for every photo. Well, the thing is you don't have to. Um, one of the things I've done is in Lightroom, I know where some of my downfalls are with Lightroom compared for my cameras. So when I see a ca what looks like a cast problem, but it's across most of the pictures for a particular room, I know that it probably wasn't from my lights alone, especially a room like this that had 25 foot ceilings. There's no way I was really getting cast. I wasn't even using that much light. So there wasn't enough dark colors to be casting, especially evenly across all those walls. A way to check it though, to see if your camera is not working well with Lightroom, which most don't to some degree. Sometimes it's so minimal you can't tell, but you just use your own OEM software. If you're using Canon, you, they've got OEM software. Nikon, like I was using, they've got their Sony. Everybody has their own and you can then check out uh, go ahead and make some TIFF files bring those as a test just into Photoshop see how they compare with something that you export from a raw file out of Lightroom then all you have to do is create an action for those curves layer once you find how far off you are and you can use that with the color validation technique that I just used here which was using then a uh, gray fill layer with uh, the uh, using that as a difference and then finding where my threshold was with a threshold layer and then making a curves adjustment layer using the gray point after that. Turn that into an action. By the way, that's in the advanced editing book also for doing that color validation step by step.
Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.